It has been nearly a month since our last confrontation with Rev. Dave Owen, which resulted in his being fired from his Baptist church by the congregation. Your move, Debbie. Maybe I should resign now. You already took my queen and both my bishops. You won't be a better chess player if you give up too quickly. Think for a couple of minutes before. I'll get that. Dr. Drake, what brings you here? Is there a medical issue I should know about? No, Mrs. Smith, this is more personal. And spiritual in nature. What do you mean? It might interest you to know that I am the new president of the Baptist congregation and Miss Jenkins is the new vice president. After the firing of Reverend Owen, the splintered congregation was able to reunite and reorganize itself. Congratulations. But what does that have to do with me? I was never a member of your church. True, but you and the Sims couple are the ones who forced us to change. Miss Jenkins, Jason Laker, and I have been telling stories about you and many of the members of the congregation are curious about your atheist and Unitarian Universalist beliefs and the lesbianism of your friends and even your daughter. Are you and your friends and daughter willing to come speak to us? I might, assuming you were really willing to listen to us and not judge us like we have had to endure in the past. And we are willing to listen to you in return. After Dr. Drake left, I made a phone call. Dale Husband, I understand that you were a Southern Baptist before you became a Unitarian Universalist, correct? Yes. My spiritual evolution is a little more complicated than that, but otherwise, that's true. I and the Sims couple have been asked to speak at the local Baptist church, but I am not really that good at speaking publicly to an audience. Would you like to help? I'm not much of a speaker myself, but what I can do is give you some resources to allow you to deal with some arguments and objections the members of the church may make to you after you arrive there. And so the following Sunday, I, Debbie, James, the Sims couple, and Carrie arrived at the Baptist church. Quite a few familiar faces were there, including Dr. Drake, Carla Jenkins, Mr. Hernandez who was actually Catholic and Jason Laker. Nervously, I went to the pulpit and began to speak. It might interest some of you to know that I was raised in a Christian family, but even before I became an adult I found the Christian religion unacceptable to me and then I became an atheist. So you might wonder what persuaded me that Christianity was not true. Actually, that's not the real issue. It is really not possible to know for sure if there is a God or not, or what religion among many is true. If we relied only on empirical evidence for our beliefs, I don't think theism would be very popular at all. So rather than debunk anyone's deeply held belief in God, let us share some ideas from a blogger named Dale Husband, who was himself once a Baptist. He came up with a concept called spiritual orientation to explain why different people are attracted to or repelled by certain religions. This is what he wrote for Christians. Remember that Jesus, said to be the founder of Christianity, was a Jew, as were his early disciples. Therefore anyone who is a genuine Christian would also love and respect the Jewish religion and people. Anti-Semitism should have absolutely no place among Christians. Jesus himself wrote nothing that survives to this day. What you read about him in the Christian scriptures, commonly called the New Testament, are second-hand accounts of what some people thought he said. Do not take those quotations at face value. Do not believe that the Bible or any part of it is the infallible word of God. That is actually an insult to any real God that may exist. Remember that one form of idolatry is attributing God's glory to anything man-made, including books that have references to God himself in them. The many references in the Christian scriptures to the coming of the kingdom of God were interpreted by many Christian leaders as referring to the literal coming of Jesus to conquer the world and directly rule it afterwards. This is absurd. If that was the case, it should have happened while the generation that lived in the time of Jesus still was around. They have all been dead for over 1900 years. Those prophecies must already have been fulfilled with the rise of Christianity to take over the formerly pagan-dominated Roman Empire. Writers like Hal Lindsey, who claimed otherwise, were lying to us. Remember that the Apostle Paul, who wrote about half of the Christian scriptures that were later accepted by the early Christian community as valid, was not even an original disciple of Jesus. He led some of the early Christians, including many from non-Jewish backgrounds, 
in a very different direction from the groups that consisted mostly of Jews. The Jewish groups eventually faded away, leaving the non-Jewish ones. The result was a badly distorted faith. After all these centuries, we simply have no way of knowing if Paul was a legitimate Christian leader or not. In most cases, you must be a Christian and nothing else. Do not claim as your primary religious identity any subdivision within Christianity, such as Roman Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Mormon, or anything else. You would be a Christian who might go to a Baptist or Catholic church, but that's it. Reject as necessary or justified any division within a Christian community that claims to be the one true religion. It is only Christianity itself that ever should have made that claim. Not Mormonism, not the Jehovah's Witnesses, nor any other such radical reformist or restorationist group within Christianity. These are simply additional divisions that do more damage to the credibility of Christianity itself. There is one exception to this, if you are also a member of a religious group that is actually multi-faith, like the Unitarian Universalist Association. Then you should distinguish yourself from non-Christian UUs, but also celebrate the UAism you have in common with them. Next to take the podium was Lucy. When I was younger, I used to wonder why hypocrisy was such a problem in religions like Christianity. One day, the answer came to me in the Bible itself. In the Law of Moses, specifically Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16, it is written, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers, every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Incredibly, Moses himself broke that law. When the Midianites were conquered and plundered by Moses' followers in Numbers chapter 31, Moses gave this order, Kill every male among the little ones. He actually insisted that boys die for the sins of their fathers in that case. Also, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 13 through 18, God killed a newborn baby for the sins of his father, King David. Jesus condemned hypocrisy among his own people, why should God himself, who gave us the laws in the Bible, be allowed to break them? The simple truth is that God had nothing to do with the writing and assembly of the various parts of the Bible. It was written by men who told stories about God and those who believed in God, but those were still only stories, just as the Harry Potter novels are stories of this modern age. Is it possible that the writers of the biblical stories intended in at least some cases to make fiction, and then centuries later some people mistook those fictional stories for real history? Imagine if 1000 years from now, there was a religion based on the Harry Potter stories. So how can religions based on biblical stories be justified but not a religion based on Harry Potter? The next speaker was Jessica. I and my wife have gotten a lot of hateful messages insisting that our being a lesbian couple violates the laws of God. But as my wife just said, God does not keep his own laws, so why must we? Also, Lucy spoke of God killing King David's baby. But as an atheist, I reject that idea. Ironically, atheism lets God off the hook, so to speak. If there is no God, there is no one to blame when a baby dies of an illness, or if a hurricane destroys a coastal town and kills dozens of people there, or if there is a mass shooting in which five or six people die in a shopping mall. Tragedies just happen, it is useless to either blame God for them nor to ask him to fix things. The responsibility for doing repairs after any disaster is on us alone. As Lucy said, when God and his messengers do not follow their own rules, they open the door for rules to not matter at all. For anyone. And that is why I, as a highly ethical atheist and Unitarian Universalist, don't need your kind of God-centered religion at all. I do have strict rules and principles and I seek to obey them in all ways. Those rules are based on real needs of real people in real time. No God is involved in such rules and therefore there is no issue of hypocrisy from that God. The hypocrisy, if it exists, would all be on me. The final speaker was Carla Jenkins. I have learned the hard way that things you were brought up believing as a child are not necessarily true or even useful. The idea that only one religion must be able to save souls is a lie that must have been invented by Satan, not God. Christianity itself is divided into thousands of different sects, so which one is true and which ones can save us? We simply cannot know. 
we just have to decide what is best for us as individuals and then proceed to mind our own business. We are all human beings and our humanity is everything. It is forgetting that which tears us apart from each other. Finally, the congregation was asked to make an important decision. I think we have heard enough from our guests today, so now I, as president of this church, make a formal motion that we as a congregation vote to leave the Southern Baptist Convention and instead join the Unitarian Universalist Association. As you use most of us can continue to call ourselves Christians if we feel that religion is right for us, but we will no longer shun and scorn atheists and LGBT people. Bigotry is evil no matter what the cause of it and we should affirm this. Dr. Drake, as Vice President of the Church, I second this motion. Very well. All in favor of this move, raise your right hand now. And to our absolute amazement, more than two-thirds of the congregation present voted to join the Unitarian Universalist Association. Suddenly, our UU Fellowship, which had previously only numbered less than a dozen, now numbered more than 100. Congratulations, Mrs. Smith. I can't believe this has happened. We never thought an entire church would join with us when we first formed the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship nearly two years ago to resist the anti-atheist and anti-LGBT bigotry that dominated this town. Well, we as a church had to finally face the facts. Under Reverend Owen, an increasing number of our younger members were rejecting the church and leaving it in without younger members. The church was beginning to die off. Maybe now we can draw some of those young people back. They don't need hypocrisy and bigotry, even if most of us older folks grew up with it. They need love. The kind of love you clearly have for each other and for us. Thank you for showing us a better example of how to live. 